Can you taste the Rambo? What do you think, sir? I, I, I need a bag of Skittles. We're gonna shoot a full video on it, so make sure you guys check out the video on these nine E92 M3s, um, paint to sample, all amazing cars. How awesome is it that we're using these cars as our rental cars? Oh, of course, of course, but. So good. Tell me about this M2. So we're driving this M2 CS. It's, it's pretty quick. We, uh, we may have done a little bit of good driving. <laughs> I love the how analog it is. I love that it's uh, analog gauges. It has a, a mechanical handbrake. It's and I also love that the shifting action is super precise. Really nice. Pretty, so. pretty similar to my BMW in that sense. Just much, 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 much more. <laughs> 20 times more. Yes. Or yes. more. Absolutely. <laughs> Actually, probably. Probably 50. more like 100 times more. <laughs> Mine was like $2,000. Right. right. <laughs> What's up, guys? Larry Chen here. Welcome to my channel. Behind me are nine BMW E92s. Nine of them. Mm. All nine. All nine. All nine. All nine. M3 E92s. We have an E92 traffic jam. I feel like the title of this video should be <laughs> Florida Man Collects All of the Rare E92s. Gluttonous Florida Man Collects Every E92. Yeah. This is insane. It's absurd. This is so cool. Yeah, there's no reason for it other than to show them off to the world, man. You're just like a BMW guy. I've become a BMW guy. You know, it's, uh, it's a bit of a painful move transitioning from the Audi guy to the BMW guy. You know, I feel like I've uh, left uh, a woman behind for another nine women. Yeah. <laughs> That's good. Yeah. All right, so yeah. first of all, this is my yeah. buddy Drew. If you guys haven't noticed already, we are at the Adam LZ compound. As you can see, see Drew cool. is repping yeah. pretty good. They've converted me, they've broken me. Yeah, so I'm now an LZ guy. First of all, you bought Adam's RS6 Avant. RS6 Avant. Correct. The blue one that's Correct. super famous. Nagaro blue, get it right. Nagaro blue. Yes. And then that's kind of how you connected with Adam. Yeah. These are actually yeah. currently here, mm -hmm. but they will be for sale soon, correct? They will. Uh, Adam and I shot a quick video. I was undecided what I was going to do with them and the feedback has been overly positive. Uh, I am a dealer, I am also a collector, but even with anything I collect, I just, I can't keep it. You know that, I've got car ADD. I'm gonna let them go. I'm gonna put them on pcarmarket.com. It'll be mid-March, so I think they'll probably go live the 8th or 9th of March. They'll probably end around the 17th, maybe the 18th. So keep, you know, keep your eyes posted. Yeah, so you are a used car, high-end car dealer Correct. in Florida, Central Florida, mm -hmm. or all over Florida? Central Florida. The cars are kept in Central Florida, but you know, the, the guys and the girls that buy them, they're all over the country. We house them here now. Uh, we have a new facility that we're gonna be opening in Central Florida. I've got some at my personal house. I've got some at a storage facility at my office, and we've got them everywhere. The question is why the E92? There's so many BMW M variants. Yeah. Why this? car in particular? I mean, to me, it made sense. We're, we're entering a, the next transition uh, in the car business where we're getting out of ICE cars completely. It might be five years, it might be 10 years, but the internal combustion engine is, is going to die soon. So this car was an end of era car for BMW. It's the last naturally aspirated uh, engine that they've had in the M product. It's the last V8 naturally aspirated engine as well. I mean, it's an iconic car for the M3. It's before the M4 was converted. So this is, you know, the, the M4 now, and the F-Series was basically the two-door version of the M3. Mm -hmm. So it just made sense. I do have some experience with the E92. I'm not a big BMW guy. I know a little bit about them, but without a doubt, I kind of got turned on to BMWs from the BMW films. Yeah, yeah, you right. know, the, early 2000s. The, yeah, the yeah. early 2000s. Of course, around that time, the yeah. E92 wasn't a thing. It wasn't until I started shooting sports car racing, that's kind of when I really started following BMW. So I had a chance to shoot the E92 GT3 race car. Mm -hmm. And of course, also BMW at the time, they lent me a brand new E92 just to drive around Florida, 
you know, to Sebring right. and just to experience the street car. But then at the same time, I had a chance to shoot the race car on the track. And on top of that, I love this four liter high revving NA V8 motor Correct. so much. It actually raced in this chassis, but also it continued to race in the Z4 GT3 also. Yeah. Yeah. So this engine is it's super iconic for BMW. You know, a lot of the technology came out of the F1 team that BMW had back in the day. Uh, hence the, all the tight tolerances on the rod bearings that everybody likes to blast that it's a problem. It's not a problem. It's a maintenance wear item that you just need to be prepared to do. The most racing heritage car here is actually the frozen silver one back there. It was kind of a, uh, a throwback to all the GT series wins that BMW had in the GT class, the F1 class. Out of all of these, these are so rare, right? The colors, yeah. I've only seen an orange one before. I call it jack-o'-lantern pumpkin orange. So the pumpkin what? orange is fire orange. You can get the pumpkin orange in a fire orange car, just where it's fire orange, it's a, uh, uh, individual color or you know paint sample whatever you want to call it but this uh, is the lime rock edition so there was a guy by the name of matt uh, that worked for bmw at the time and he wanted to do a lime rock edition so it was an homage to the lime rock park and he wanted it uh, supposedly in valencia orange originally and it was turned down because of the the 1m was in valencia orange so his second color option after he thought about it for a while i guess was fire orange and so this is one of 200. One of 200, yep. It is a DCT, as you can tell. This particular one is a dual hump, so it has the eye drive. You know, there's another term a lot of guys throw around called the stripper model, which is a single hump, which does not have the nav system. So, but this one does have eye drive. You've got the Alcantara steering wheel on this particular one, which is standard. And you also have um, all of them in a comp pack. So they came with the electronic steering dampening, the steering column, different suspension, carbon fiber spoiler, carbon fiber, uh, lip in the front, the Alcantara steering wheel once again, and then this particular Lime Rock Edition came in the fire orange. Out of all of these, how many of them are manual and how many of them are DCT? So surprisingly, only one of them is a manual. So we've got eight DCTs. The speed yellow is the manual. And the, you know, the DCT was really pushed pretty hard from BMW on this generation, the E9X as a whole. It's like, uh, we look back at it, you know, 10 years in, in, in reverse, and this was the first double clutch transmission that was that was good, it was really good. You know, there was a, a few attempts prior from uh, Porsche and uh, Audi, Volkswagen with DSG, but this was the one that really just hit it hard. With the BMW press car, I had a white one and mm -hmm. uh, I actually shot it in the swamp here in Florida and I did have a chance to drive it pretty hard, the DCT version, and it shifts hard. Mm -hmm. But um, just off camera, you were saying that with just a couple ECU updates, yeah. you can actually get it to shift even better. Yeah, so a few of these do have DCT tunes. Now, I can't tell you specifically which tune is on it because you can make it very specific and individual to your, your needs or your desires. But I had a uh, E90 M3 comp pack that had a BPM DCT tune and it had the, uh, the BPM uh, DME tune as well for the, the main ECU and it was a GT4 tune. And I gotta tell you, that's, that is the car that I absolutely fell in love with the DCT transmission as a whole. I've had a couple Porsches, I've, I've got a, a couple now, and obviously I want them in a manual, but this particular car with the appropriate tune, I prefer it in a DCT. I'm sure everybody's gonna blast me for saying that, but I love it. I think it's fantastic. With that said, I definitely yeah. want to drive that yellow one. That is a stripper mm -hmm. model also, correct? It is. Yeah, so it's stripper model, so single hump. The stripper model basically means you don't have the, the screen that the iDrive gives you, and you have manual seats, and then that's a manual transmission as well. Honestly, yeah. that's kind of one of the things that we always like to talk about. It dates the car. The technology dates the car, mm -hmm. and with it not having a screen for navigation or anything yeah. like that, it's kind of timeless. It's timeless. It ages much better. I agree. But once again, I'm sure I'll get picked on for this. Um, the iDrive does have better Bluetooth, so even though it's gonna it's gonna age better, you know, 10 or 20 years from now, you can control your music if you're a music person with the dual hump. Yeah, but it's getting to the point where these vehicles are so sought after, and these are just so much more. Um, just because they're special, the color, uh, the trim, mm -hmm. there's so much more than just a regular run-of-the-mill model Correct. E92. Correct. So every single one of these is a paint to sample. Every single one of them is a badged car, so it's a limited production car. It's controversial 
how many are made of, of some of these. Like some we know are stated from BMW. Others, uh, like the Phoenix Yellow, is a, it's got a badge in the car. It says one of two. It's uncertain if it's one of two in the U.S. or one of two in the world. So there's a lot of controversy on that with some of them. Uh, but they're all paint to sample. They're all competition package cars and they're all badge limited production. I've never seen a frozen E92 ever at all. Well, luckily you can see three here right now. Yeah. <laughs> frozen blue, one of 72, black wheels on this particular one. And the, the person that ordered this from new actually did a spoiler delete. All the other ones have the carbon spoiler. Some um, have been you know, replaced, but this particular one uh, we left the way it was because it was a spoiler delete on the window sticker. And all of these have carbon roofs except for? Well, they all the competition offered a carbon roof, but there's only one that doesn't, and it's the Dakar yellow, and it does have the sunroof. So you could do uh, the metal roof with the sunroof delete if you wanted to as well, which some of the guys, they like that. But, you know, I like it with the carbon roof personally. So that's the only one without it. But frozen blue, it's got uh, blue stitching, which is pretty cool inside the, the car. This is a DCT. Most of the frozens came um, in DCT. Um, there are a few frozen colors that were only offered in DCT. So it's, it's once again, BMW pushed it really, really hard uh, when these were new. The LCI models from you know, 2010 to or 10.5 to 2013. It's blue stitching. Yeah. Um, what yeah. about the trim? Is any of this trim different versus the other model? So, yeah, some of them. So you can do, it's rare, but you can do like a brushed aluminum uh, inlay on the, on the dash. And there's some other ones like the frozen silver, which we'll look at here in a minute, where they did a high gloss carbon, which is you know more common now and on the dash. And they did it here on the center console as well. Most of them have the, like the, Almost like exposed carbon. And uh, this one is the one of two, but you're unsure if this is... Whoa, it actually says one of two though, yeah. on, on the plate here. Yeah, it has a badge. Yeah, okay. and this, those are provided from BMW when you get the car from new. And some of the other ones have the badges as well. They're just not, you know, glued to the car. It's so weird that it says one, it's spelled out one of two instead of T-W-O. Yeah, number two. That is so weird. Yeah. <laughs> and, and once again, these are, uh, the badged cars are the competition cars. So a lot of people will have emailed me saying that, you know, there's more, but these are specific to competition packaged cars, not just a base M3. So then out of all of these, how many of them are modified already? Not very many. Well, I shouldn't say that. This has an M performance exhaust. The black one has got the uh, Kropovich exhaust with the cats removed. The Dakar has the M performance exhaust. The Lime Rock has actually got a factory titanium exhaust, which is another cool feature. I kind of skipped over that. Sounds a little bit different. You know, titanium gives you just a little, a little extra vibration. Are those from the factory or is it something that you had to buy and add later? No, the, the Lime Rock, which is once again the, what'd you call it? What orange did you call it? Uh, Jack-o-lantern. The Jack-o-lantern orange mm -hmm. had the titanium from the factory. But the, M, the ones that have the M performance or the Acro exhaust, are gonna be aftermarket. But you know, in performance products on a BMW are, it's a pretty normal thing. So this is frozen black. Mm -hmm. Again, very hard to clean, very hard to polish out if there's some imperfections. Impossible but it clean. it looks awesome. It looks fantastic. This is one of the rarest cars we have here. So they, they did two runs of frozen black. They did an initial run of 20 with red stitching on the interior, which is what this is. And they did a later run of frozen black 20 more with black stitching. Mm -hmm. On the ones that were the initial run, when they had the red stitching like this one, supposedly BMW held one of them. So they only sold 19, even though they made 20. One thing I noticed about some of these, some of them are kilometers an hour and mm -hmm. some of them are miles an hour. What, what's going on there? Yeah, so Canadian versus US. You know, once again, when you look at the, the, the badged cars, uh, well, they all are, but when you look at the, the number of uh, production, um, it's supposedly for North America. So Canada included, and this one's been, I know this has been imported. It's got a maple leaf on it. Santorini is a Canadian car, the one with the Honda license plate frame. So it's twice as reliable, obviously. I think you actually put that on there. <laughs> Where is the maple leaf? Oh, it's on the door. It's on the VIN on the door. You're kidding. No, no, no. It actually uh, has yeah, a right maple. There. What? Yeah. Oh, that's actually pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. So that's how you know this car's Canadian. Canadian. So how well, many- that and I have no idea how fast I'm going. Right. Right. How many of these are kilometers an hour? Three. Okay. Three this one, Santorini, and oh, the Java. Sorry, the Java is a, 
kilometer. Got it. So first time I got in the Java, it said I was going like 160 or something, and naturally I thought I was going 160, but you can do the math. Yeah, got so, it. Right. Uh, I love this yellow so yeah. much. Yeah, so Dakar yellow, it's a, I don't know if you can see it on camera, but it's a pastel. It's really pretty. Uh, it shows low light really well and uh, you know, high noon sun. This was a E36 M3 color, Correct. right? It was. And then that yeah. was a E46 M3 color. E46, E36, yeah. Got it. Yep. So were any of these other heritage colors? Uh, no, no, yes. Uh, I think so, but I don't have 100% details on that one. I should probably look that up. No, that was supposed to be Valencia Orange, which is a 1M, oddly, over there. Which is yeah. right there, right. which I had a chance to drive earlier today, mm -hmm. and I absolutely am terrified of it because it's too fast. You can't, it's, it, it's worthless. I mean, all the way up to third gear when it's hot, and when the tires are hot, and then fourth gear if it's cold or wet. So yeah. I do like this. I, I think it looks amazing. One of the accents mm -hmm. for the competition package are the carbon fiber mm -hmm. kidneys grills? Uh, no, so these are, uh, aftermarket. Oh, okay. So, so, yeah, some of them have them, but they're 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 gloss black. Got it. Yeah, yeah. So the previous owners switched some stuff out, like yeah, carbon mirrors on the Dakar, where they don't normally have carbon mirrors or color match. Mm -hmm. So we kind of left it. You know, like you put all the cars together, and you don't want to make them all 100% the same. They all have their own history, so kind of keep the history to the car. How many did they make of that one? Dakar Yellow was one of 23 in North America. I don't know how many states. With that said, because it's one of two, one of mm -hmm. 23, one yeah. of 200, this, that, and the other, they are all different price points then. They are, and it doesn't necessarily mean that like the one of two is the most expensive. You know, I, I would think the Speed Yellow, which is one of three, is the most expensive. I have to assume that the Lime Rock is gonna be the second most expensive, and it's one of 200, so it actually is the, the most produced of all these, but it's the most sought after of any competition M3 you know, E92 out there. It's that car. If you have a collection, you have to have one of these. Otherwise it's, you know, in question. And then what about this part? That's carbon fiber. Yeah, those are uh, M performance parts on some of them. Uh, but also some of the cars came with it, like this frozen silver, that's a, it's a stock part. So, it, you know, they all have it now except frozen blue. Right, but this yeah. is just this part, right? Uh, yeah, it's just a. It's it's separate. Like you look at the frozen correct. blue, and yeah. it's all connected. Mm -hmm. It looks like, and then also on top of that, the frozen silver has a lip, and this doesn't even have a lip. The frozen silver, the the they were removed, and the guy that we bought it off of put the frozen lip on it. This is the Java, Java Green, one of eleven. I initially thought that there were zero in the um, United States, but I was quickly corrected from the all-knowing internet. Uh, we have now confirmed there are three others in the United States. I know of one that was produced specifically for the United States. Uh, this was brought in from Canada. I don't know about the other two, but I know there's four at least in the United States. If you have, uh, if you have another one, hit me up, send me an email, look me up on Instagram. I'd love to see um, all the Javas out there. But this is one of the most brilliant colors um, that we have. It's just, it's so hard to photograph. Yeah, it looks great. Yeah. And this sitting next to the stripper model, uh -huh. I can tell right away, like this being clean and good looking, and then you look at this and it has headlight washers. Yeah. That's already a big difference, uh -huh. just from the look. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They also did, I think you can do it, you can delete those, which I honestly don't know if any of them have it deleted. Yeah, but then like you have to like put a put a, a plug over. there or yeah, something. Yeah. yeah. But also what's interesting is some of these have um, caps. Yeah for the turn signals because as a BMW driver, mm -hmm. you don't need the turn signal, so you just cap it. No, actually, as a, it's a big misconception. As a BMW driver, you forget how to use them. You might as well rip the turn signal completely off and throw it in the trash. I'm not one of those people. <laughs> I, kept, I kept mine on all nine. It's funny because this is, uh, obviously it doesn't need to be body matched. Yeah, right, uh, because no need. Because it's pretty close in color already. It's pumpkin orange. But it would look pretty ugly for it to have uh, amber a uh, cornering lamp here. So that's why somebody decided to cap well, they, it. And it honestly most of looks them, a lot better. Most of them get capped. Okay. Yeah, uh, it does look a lot better. Like that one, th this car has been completely untouched. So, I mean, you can tell next to the Java, yeah. but there's... This is just, a US thing too, right? It is Because I think thing. the European cars didn't have Correct. this. Correct. Got yeah. it. DOT requirements. The big difference, of course, is the single hump 
as you were saying, so there is actually not a hump here. Correct. Versus like on this model, yeah. you can see there is a hump, two humps, that actually kind of ruins the interior lines a little bit. I mean, I think two humps are better than no humps. <laughs> but with that said, the interior on this is so clean. I, I really like the look of everything just being straight and very clean mm -hmm. uh, where the LCD screen should be and also where all the climate control stuff is. Well, and you have the, the iDrive control is missing as well. So it's like almost a cup holder, but not quite. Whoa, that Just is like weird. Put so, random items. No, that's kind of like a Red Bull holder, dude. Very clean. Yeah. Manual like seats. Manual seats. Yeah. I, this is this is the one I want to drive. I want to try this okay. one. Okay. You should yeah. buy it. No, oh, this is the most yeah. expensive one too. I know it is. Yeah. So what's your best guess on how much this should go for? I know you're a car dealer. Yeah. Um, yep. But like a honest, fair mm -hmm. opinion on what this can sell for. This was the, the biggest like controversial price of the ones that are here. And I really, really took my time. Um, I have a couple of comps that are in the 120 range for cars that are as rare, but they're not as rare as a color. So I think being that this has 6,900 miles, it is a stripper model, it is a manual. There's a little bit of a price bump for a manual and it's speed yellow, which is a Porsche color. It's 120 to 130. It's a range. I mean, I can't put an exact price on it, but that's what it should yeah. go for. It, it's kind of incredible because you could potentially find a clapped out E92 for about 30,000, mm -hmm. right? 30 to 35. Got it. Yeah, okay. non, non comp. Yeah. Yeah, beat up, yeah. worn out. With a lot of miles. A lot of miles, regular color. Also, you have to remember like, this is almost a brand new car still. It smells brand new still. You know, every BMW has that leather smell. We were talking about it earlier. Yes, I mean, very distinctive. It's interesting because the 1M smells like a BMW more than mm. the M2, but maybe yeah. once the M2 has a chance to bake in the sun, I think one has almost 30,000 miles and one is pretty much brand new. Once it has time to marinate in the sun, maybe it's <laughs> yeah. going to extract some of that the resin and the, the smell mixed with the leather, it's gonna turn into a BMW's fragrance. I will say though, the the new materials in like the new gen BMWs, they, they actually do smell totally different. Mm. That M5, the CS, it's got a, a chemical smell to it. Mm. I've never smelt it in any other BMW mm -hmm. and I've been in two M5 CS's so far and they both smell the same. But these are genuine BMW smells included. Out of all of these, What's the highest miles and what's the lowest miles? Highest mileage is once again is the Phoenix Yellow, which is like a shade of gold. It's 60, just over 61,000 miles. Lowest is gonna be the speed at 6,900 miles. Uh, Frozen Blue is 15,000 miles. And then what's the earliest year and latest year? Earliest we have is a 2011, uh, the Dakar. And the latest is 13, which is most of them. There's Got a couple of 12s in here. And then this one is probably your personal favorite. It is. Originally, it was the Phoenix Yellow. So I have a ZCP pack E46, uh, which is the competition package in the Phoenix Yellow. Love it. it. Fits the lines of that car amazingly. I saw the Phoenix Yellow in person and I was like, yeah. I don't know, I still like it. And then when I got it back to Florida, I'm slowly fading away from it. And uh, this is now uh, pulling at my heartstrings. So I might order a new G80 in this. In this color. In this color. Paint a sample. Paint, yeah, yeah. I don't know why it is, but I kind of agree with you. I feel like the Phoenix Yellow looks better on a E46. The weird thing is I haven't had them next to each other yet. They're in two different garages. I actually think from looking at pictures and seeing them both several times in person, I actually think they're a different color. Even though the paint code says it's not. Got I think it. there's just enough difference in it um, to be a little different. I need to confirm. I need to get them together. This is your recent daily driver you've been enjoying it i've been schlepping it around yeah uh, as you've seen yeah, i love your it. honda it's it keeps me from breaking down man yeah no. plus it adds all the torques so this so. actually has an m performance exhaust too. it does most of them do and the uh, m performance wing the oh. thing about the m3 and the m cars mm -hmm. in general i really like the fact that they're pretty subtle you could have a regular three series and it kind of blends into traffic yeah unless you actually know about cars, you don't really know that it's special, you know? Mm -hmm. There's a couple key things that really stand out to differentiate it from the regular three series, mm -hmm. like the hump, 
Hump, right, the hump it's, is it's a lot wider. Watch. There's just certain things that kind of make it that much more aggressive. Right. And that's kind of why I like the M cars. I think they're cool that it's just like the top model of mm. that series. Of the subtleties in all of these, I think this is actually the most subtle, but probably the third or fourth uh, most unique. But it's, very, it's, once again, it's very subtle. Like the black vents was a frozen silver thing only from factory. It has uh, high gloss carbon, on the dash, it's got a uh, different e-brake, which is a heritage to the GT model. And oh. the paint, yeah, this is like uh, the paint on this one. Oh, what? Okay, yeah. so this is cool. Yeah, yeah, So yeah. different door sills, mm -hmm. um, a bunch of carbon fiber accents. The other ones kind of have a fake carbon fiber look. Yeah, it, I, right. I yeah. can't tell if it's real or not. No, I should know not. the answer to that, but I, I, I mean, I, I don't, don't know if it's, it's exposed. Real. No, I don't think so. I think it's just yeah. like a, a, a pattern. Um, that they put on whatever mm -hmm. the material it is. This is legitimate Legit, real yeah. carbon. And the center console. Yeah, and the center console right. is really nice. And I really do like the e-brake. Oh, also the steering wheel is really nice. Yeah, it's got too. the Alcantara. That's the GTS wheel. It's got the GTS door sills. It has the carbon fiber or the different e-brake. And frozen silver, mm -hmm. one of... 40. Mm -hmm. But yeah, no, overall, like th this is probably the most subtle of all of them. It's just a silver car. Yeah. Right? It's nothing, nothing crazy about this. But it looks you, great, though. Yeah, if you know what it is, you know what it is. It's just these little touches. Mm -hmm. But I'm just saying M cars in general, right? It's unfortunate mm -hmm. that the M3s kind of strayed away from what this was, especially I, I drove the G80 recently, right? right? Actually, right. yesterday. Yep. And it just feels more like an M5 versus an M3. Well, they got so big. Yeah. You know, so for me personally, the M2 is my new favorite, like sized M car. It's almost the size of like an E46, where it's just, you know, a little more uh, heritage in the M product. Yeah, and it's a coupe, Correct. just like these. Did they make the uh, E90 M3 in the competition? Yeah, package? yeah, that was the one I was just talking about that I had the, the DCT tune on it. I had a Space Gray E90. Which, you know, for me, I'm probably a weirdo, but uh, I like the E90, the four-door version, the most. I have two kids, though, so that might have something to do with it. But uh, it's even more subtle. It's just a sedan. But those things are not worth as much. No, Nowhere near as now. Of the ones out there, the 92s, these are some of the most valuable. I'm curious to see what they're going to go for. I might lose money on some of them, but uh, I might break even on others, and I might make a couple bucks on some. Either one person's going to buy them all, or nine people, or three people buying nine. But they're definitely going to go for sale. So since you're selling nine... Hmm. You probably do like an eight for one deal. You buy eight, you get one free, right? Yeah, yeah. I was gonna do seven and get two free, but you just, you God. just bumped me. So okay, yeah. All right. You just put some money back in my pocket. Yeah. Seven. Just buy seven. Buy seven. What would you do with all of them? Right now, it just looks like a traffic jam in LA, yeah. honestly. Uh, but yeah. but it's like a time warp. It's 10 years ago. You're stuck in traffic in LA on the 405, and it looks like this. We were we were joking earlier that if you looked up the word gluttony in, in the dictionary in a couple of years, it's just going to be this. It's just your face. It's, yeah, no. And yeah. behind you. <laughs> it's behind the cars. You? Yeah. No, it's, right. it's you, yeah. but yeah. behind you, you're yeah. just laying on top of all of yeah. these cars. So you're just... <laughs> yeah. It is absurd. It's ridiculous. Yeah. It is is really cool yeah. though you like bmws you've had I a do. lot of bmws currently you mm -hmm. have a lot of bmws mm -hmm. and uh it's been really nice for us to kind of sample all of them this is the skittles pack it is this it's is uh it. fruity pebbles fruit loops skittles whatever you want to call it but we we do get to sample them right so uh we've talked about this for the last couple days it's awesome to get in one with sixty thousand miles and you love it and you enjoy it and then you get in one with fifteen thousand miles and you're like wow this thing drives just wildly different Every single one of them has a soul, and like, there's not too many people that get to experience every single one of them. You can drive them all, all nine in one day if you want. We were even talking about this last night at dinner. Um, the power to literage is actually pretty high for the era. Right. Right, so you, it's 414 horsepower. Correct. I don't know, maybe some of them dyno more or less, depending on exhaust or intake, whatever you guys have. But it's right. four liters. Right. And so it's over, 100 horsepower per liter mm -hmm. and it redlines at it, stock at 8200 and you can it, once again with the dme tune it'll redline at 8600 which is most of the time what people do i mean you got to wring the neck of it and unlike the honda s2000 like we were talking about earlier you really got to drive that car like you hate it this one you're gonna still drive it like you hate it but it doesn't feel like you're abusing it it just wants to keep pulling and keep going 
and the torque is great. I think it's uh, 400 and maybe it's like 390 torque. Is there anything else you want to add before we, before I actually drive the yellow one to mm. lunch? Can I drive with you? Yeah. I mean, no. No. How oh. dare you ask oh. me that? I think we should each drive our own. Maybe we should have TJ Hunt and Adam LZ join us. <laughs> They're right over there. Yeah, once again, they converted me. I'm wearing the shirt. Afterwards, we can do nine car tandem here at the compound. Yeah, why not? What an interesting collection, really. Mm -hmm. um, it, what, it's, what it's, should I do next? I, I don't know. What, what do you want to do next? I don't Seriously. Know. Adam's, Adam's got me uh, looking at some other stuff. Yeah? Yeah, some... some uh, I, th I think I know what you're going to do. Mm, what I gonna think do? you're going to try to get uh, all the different colored Pontiac Aztecs together because it's like the Kill Pontiac collection. Oh, right. yeah. But do I sell them or do I crush them? <laughs> yeah. Well, all right. So we're going to take them out and then, yeah. Uh, yeah, we'll see you guys on the road.